Hi, I'm Bill Holiday with AIO Financial. I'm going to run through a brief market review for the third quarter of 2024. The big news has been the reduction in interest rates, or big financial news. Uh, the Fed dropped the interest rate by 0.5%. This is the first reduction they've had since 2020 when they dropped it to zero because of uh, COVID uh, pandemic that we had. They were expecting a quarter or a half percent reduction. They went with half a percent. You can see this plot is showing the federal funds rate, but they're also showing the 30-year fixed mortgage rate. Uh, you can see rates were coming down in anticipation of that reduction. It was pretty well communicated that it was going to happen. Inflation has ducked under 3%. At about two and a half percent, we'll see how it reacts to this rate cut, but their target is 2% and they seem to be on a good trajectory. The expected Fed's rate is overall expected to come down about 2% from where it was before. We're expecting another two years of rate cuts. I mean, we'll see how inflation and unemployment react um, and how they are doing going forward. There's still a lot of unknowns, uh, including a presidential election, but the, the anticipation is there'll be interest rate cuts over the next couple of years um, in bringing the rates down by about 2% and it worth half a percent down. This quarter, it's been pretty good. You can see the stock market this quarter has been up, down, up, down, um, and up slightly so far this quarter. Bond funds have moved up, and that is because of the anticipation of the Fed cutting rates. So funds will move up, even though the interest they pay will go down. But if you own a fund, a bond fund, and it's at, you know, it has all these bonds at a certain interest rate and interest rates cut. So if you go out to the market, the rates are lower, your bond fund becomes more valuable. And the longer the duration of your bond, the more valuable it is. And so the more it will move up. Um, and so we are expecting over the next couple of years, this trend will continue. Um, sorry, let me go back one second here. Uh, this is a year, plot of the whole year, the S&P 500 and intermediate term bonds. You can see for the year, the stock market has, the U.S. stock market has done excellently. Um, this last quarter is from the red line on. Um Bonds, too, have been anticipating this rate cut, and then it never came, and now it uh, was more imminent and then actually happened. Just looking at bonds and different duration bond funds, you'll see ultra-short bond funds are very stable. They pay the least interest. Short-term bond funds pay a little bit more interest. Pretty stable, too. The impact that they have from interest rates going down is greater the longer the duration the bond fund is. So intermediate term bond funds, you'll see a bigger impact because of this. And in the reverse happens, they have a bigger impact when interest rates went up, they lost more money. Ultra shorts were the most stable. Uh, this is just, you could flip this uh, when interest rates were going up. But now that we're expecting interest rates to go down for the next couple of years, we do expect these trends overall to continue. You could also see the longer the duration the bond fund, the more volatility there is. Just less predictable, the more swings you have. Um, okay. So equity markets up about two and a half percent this quarter so far, and almost 18% this year. We've had all-time highs. We just hit all-time highs in the stock market yesterday hoping that we don't run into a recession or a major slowdown. I mean, things look good. We'll see what happens. Uh, interest rates were cut by 0.5% is the big news there. As far as sectors, we're showing um, how much its, its exposure is in the S&P 500. Six-month trailing performance and 12-month trailing performance. And you can see tech definitely overperformed. The, this bottom line is the S&P 500. So the overall market here is at the bottom. Tech overperformed in the six-month and 12-month periods. Financials and communication services did excellent in the one-year period. I guess the big underperformers have, have been 
energy, consumer discretionary, this last uh, six months has slowed down quite a bit. As far as countries, Argentina doing excellent. This is a six month, one year, five year report or table. Um, Argentina, Taiwan, India, Spain, US, all excellent returns this last year. China, Mexico, definitely um, struggling. They did have a new election in Mexico and some of that, uh, I think, is a reaction to the new administration. US, this is Vanguard's, take this with a grain of salt, just their expected returns, not that it's going to come true, but just so you have an idea what some analysts are expecting. I think the big things I point out is that there's a lot of volatility in the stock market. So, you know, plus or minus a large, um, a, a large plus or minus. This could be a big unknown of where it's going to land. But just as far as what they'd expect, modest growth compared to this year where we're looking at 18% gain in the in the market they're expecting more modest return growth companies this will be your tech stocks they're expecting them to be very minimal that they've had this big overperformance and maybe they'll return back down um large cap value good but then if we look at international they are expecting non-us uh developed and emerging markets to outperform the us market in the long run, and we don't know. These are just their estimates. They don't know what's going to happen, but I think it's it's interesting. Um, real estate markets, I guess nothing really out of line with the overall market. As far as fixed income, some decent returns. You can see the volatility is a lot less on, less on fixed income. It's more predictable. It's lending as opposed to owning companies that go up and down. It's lending, getting an interest. Uh, inflation, they're expecting it to get down to that, you know, right around that 2% target. Uh, they actually are putting emerging market debt higher than U.S. debt. Of course, more volatility with that projection. Overall, some nice returns on debt well above the inflation projection. So you'd be keeping above inflation with bond investments is what they're expecting. Risks include, of course, we don't know what's going to happen. Inflation could persist. It could bounce back up. There could be an economic slowdown. Hopefully not, but there could be. There is Ukraine, U.S., China, Middle East, a lot of unknowns there. Energy prices, you know, could go up. China slowdown could have an impact, a uh, bigger global impact. And we have the U.S. elections coming up. Um, expected interest rates, well, expect interest rates to go down around 2% overall. We've already had a half percent cut, another 1.5% drop over the next two to three years. And as usual, focus on the long term with your investments. Short term investment needs definitely take less risk. But in the long run, you know, your stock investments are for the long run. Um, don't get bogged down on what's going to happen next week. We're looking at years out. Stay diversified, rebalance. Um, but yeah, a lot going on. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for listening. Bye.